Alright, so this is the dungeon generator I've been working on in Construct 3. I'm working in the free version, um, so I have a limited amount of events. I know the um, brightness, uh, or gamma, whatever you want to call it, is up really high, so if I like select something, it can kind of get um, whited out, so I'll try not to highlight things. Uh, but yeah, um, total number of events, uh, 42. So I've almost hit my max here, so I won't really be able to add any gameplay elements to this other than just the dungeon um, procedural generation. Because uh, I, like I said, I only have the free version, and I'm not going to pay for the, the, the paid version because I already paid for Construct 2. So I just wanted to play with Construct 3 and see what it's about. But let's check out the dungeon generator here. Um, so yeah, this is a procedurally generated dungeon with different holes and corridors and rooms and you have a little guy that spawns and he can move around I know it um, probably in the recording it looks really laggy or it, like it's not playing smooth but um, that's just the, with the recording on my end it actually is playing fine um, if I hit F5 and refresh um, I'll get a whole new set of rooms and a, a completely different um, layout here as you can see uh, I'll go hit F5 again and again we get a whole new uh, layout there is one bug that I've run into that I haven't been able to fix just yet and that's with uh, if you look over here on the right the map will sometimes go off the edge of the layout and that can happen in uh, north south east west top you know any direction right now I haven't put in anything to fix that but otherwise it should be working fairly well it should always generate you know some room connected to another room with corridors and um, sometimes you do get overlapping like this one these two have two different corridors which I think is kind of cool because uh, it like, makes like one big master room um, I'll refresh one more time this map is kind of off to the side over here somewhere but yeah uh, yeah, let's go through the the code here and see how this works. Actually, before I do that, I do want to run in debug just really quickly. Um, so as you can see, I don't know if you can see because it, it might be too bright, but um, in the uh, inspector here, it says there's only three objects in the entire game. Um, it's got it's running at 60 FPS with no issues, and it's only using like 0.7% of GPU, 0.6. And the total image uh, is about 3.6 megabytes of images, so it's pretty small um, for the size of it. And uh, the objects that we have for it are just an array, uh, keyboard object, player object, and then the um, tile map for the walls, which I'll talk about a little bit more in detail once we get into it. Um, looking at the event sheet here, I'll just kind of go into it. So on the sort of layout, we're setting the array to the size of the um, the layout divided by 32. Um, 32 because our tiles are 32 by 32 um, width and height. So we just want to automatically set our array to the size of the layout divided by 32. So basically each little um, box in the array will represent one tile on the, the game map. Um, we also going to set a random number of rooms between a minimum room number and a maximum room number that I've set. So it's going to generate a number between 10 and 35. And this can be just changed dynamically whenever I want um, to change the amount of rooms. But it should generate a map between anywhere between 10 and 35 rooms. And then it's going to always generate one less cor number of corridors than there are rooms in the, in the map um, just because corridors connect rooms so if I'm building the last room then we don't need to add a corridor at the end of that room uh, because there's nothing to connect it to uh, right now I have this layout scale set to 5 I had that disabled just so you can see the whole map but when I have it zoomed in this is what it looks like for the player again I apologize if it's like looking laggy on the, the video here um, but on my side it's actually playing uh, very smoothly um, but that's what it kind of looks like zoomed in I'm not that good of an artist so um, you know I'm just using really basic textures here um, there is something important to note here though but um, so basically uh, not only does it carve out the rooms but it knows which tile to place in each position 
So it knows, and each tile is 32 by 32, which is the same as a character. So this tile right here um, is one tile. And it knows that it's jutting in tiles, so it knows to play the tile that has um, a line here, a line here, and a line here, but not at the top. And then this one, it knows to only place two lines on the side without doing a top or bottom one. And then it knows that these lines are all in the centers, or tiles are all in the center, so they should have no lines. Um, and this is a bottom facing line. Um, this one's a top facing line tile um, and side and left. So it can differentiate between where the tile is located and what tile it should be um, placed there. Um, so after it sets the size of the array, basically what it does is it goes through every um, box within the array and it assigns the number two. So the number two represents a tile is there. So basically what it does is just fills the entire map with tiles. And then it adds a one to the local variable count here. Um, and once the count basically reaches the area of the um, array, uh, the width times the height, it knows that it has filled up all the um, elements within the array and to call the first function, which is create first room. Sorry, one second. All right, I had to clear my throat there for a second. Um, so once it create, uh, calls the uh, create first room event, what it's going to do is going to set a random width and a random height to our room here. Um, it's going to set it to between 5 and 10 blocks. Uh, I, I have, I'm thinking about adding another global variable for room width and height um, so I can change that on the fly without having to go in here and change it, but I haven't just yet. Um, it's also going to start the Y position X position basically in the center of the map. So it's going to take the um, width of the array and divide it by two and the height of the array divided by two to give us a, a starting position, uh, which is our X position original. And then the X position current is where the current position is. So it's going to always track where it started and then we're going to be updating the current one as we kind of roll through this. Um, that starts the loop. So while the room height is greater than zero, what we're going to do is we're going to set the current um, element to 1. It's looking at the current x position and y position. It's going to set to 1. 1 basically means it's erasing that tile. If 2 is a tile, 1 is no tile or block or however you want to say it. Um, after that, it's going to add 1 to the current x position. So it's going to move 1 to the right. It's going to add 1 to count. And then it's going to keep, it's going to loop over that again and again and again until the count is equal to the room width. So let's say our room width is five blocks wide. It'll loop through this five times to knock out one, two, three, four, five blocks, erase those. Then it knows, hey, we've done the first top line of the room. So we're gonna go down one by adding one to the Y position. Um, it's gonna set the X position back to the original. And then it's gonna subtract one from room height because we know we just finished that top layer and set the count back to zero. And it's gonna go through this all again. So it's gonna knock out the top, second, third, fourth, fifth of all the lines of the room until the room height is now equal or less than zero. So we know that the room has been created or um, dug out. And it's gonna call the create a corridor event and subtract one from the total number of rooms as we just finished our, our first room. Uh, looking at the create a corridor event, this is going to take some information from the creating of the first room event. Specifically, it's going to take the original X position, so where um, where the first room was started, like the left top left corner of where that first room was started. It's also going to take the width of the room and the height of the room as well. It's going to pass that over to the create corridor. Create corridor is uh, somewhat similar. Um, Difference being is that quarters can go in four different directions. So I set a value, uh, variable direction to a random number between one and four. Each number cor uh, correlates to a different direction. So if it direction is one, it's gonna go north, west, uh, two is gonna go west, three is gonna go south, four is gonna go east. Um, so once it's basically determined what direction it's going to go, it's going to start setting values at one, basically erasing and subtracting um, the series why it makes out it's always going to be two the corridor should always be too wide because it's always doing so in this one it's going north so it's basically knocking out um, you know the x position the y position and then this one here is saying 
oh, knock out that same thing, but just, you know, to the left side of it, or uh, le uh, negative one would be, yeah, to the left of it. So it would be going up one, knocking out one, and then this would be doing the same thing except for to the left of it. Um, then it subtracts one from the y position, basically going up. Um, and it's updating the end of like where the corridor ends to the current x and y position, and it's going to add one to the count. Um, again, it's going to continue doing this um, depending on which direction it's going to until the count is equal to or greater than the corridor length, which is set here at the top. So the corridor length could be anywhere from 8 to 15 tiles long. So it's basically going to keep looping through this until the count is equal to whatever the uh, random length of the corridor ended up being. Um, once it knows that it's hit the end of the corridor, we can go ahead and subtract one from the total number of corridors that we need. And if there's still rooms to be made, so the number of rooms is still is greater than zero, then we're going to go ahead and create call the create room function. Uh, really, all this really needs to know is where the corridor ends. So I'm just um, setting that over under the X position original and Y position or original um, so it knows where to begin the, the next room. I probably could have just looped back to this. I could probably get this all working, this create room thing, first room and regular room under one function. But, you know, for ease of understanding for myself, I just had two different ones. Um, the create room function is pretty much identical to the create first room function. Only difference is, is this one is pulling in the um, array width and height and trying to get like the middle of the map for the starting position, where this is just pulling in the, uh, ex the starting position from the end of the corridor that's being passed through. But again, it's setting the room width and height to a random number between 5 and 10 uh, blocks wide. And then while the room height is greater than zero, again, it's just kind of going left to right, knocking out and changing those all to one. And then it's saying here at the end, we're going to subtract uh, one from the number of rooms. And if there is um, still quarters left to be done, so we haven't run out of quarters yet, then we can go ahead and call the create corridor function. And then finally is where we actually spawn the tile, because everything right now is just um, kind of fugazi in the array, it's just numbers in the array. There's not, nothing that's actually ever been spawned in just yet. So this is where we actually spawn things in. And we do this by looking to see if the number of rooms is less than or equal to zero. We know that if the, the number of rooms is less than um, zero or equal to zero, then it's time to, that it's already created all the rooms, so we need to start spawning tiles. Uh, I have a boolean set to see if the, if the tiles have been spawned or else it would just continue spawning tiles over and over and over again. Um, this first set here, basically, it just looks to see, to find the very first value one in the array and let's just create a player in an empty spot that can be spawned in. And then it sets the player um, is spawned to true so that way it won't spawn multiple versions of the player. Um, but here's the interesting part here. So this is where it actually spawns the tile and sets the correct tile index for um, what's going on. So if there's a current value of 2 in the array, then it knows it needs to be a brick there. And it determines what brick should be based on the math here. So if I look at the tile map that I have, each one of these is 32 by 32, it's, um, and they're four blocks wide, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, but actually it's 15 because it starts at 0. So 0 here at the top would be if there is no bricks anywhere around it at all, and it's just like floating off by itself, then it has a wall at the top, left, bottom, and right. The um, bottom right here is kind of the inverse of that, where it has no, um, it's it's completely surrounded by bricks, so it has one at the top, right, left, and bottom, so it has no walls whatsoever. Um, the one above it here is if it has blocks on the um, left, top, and right, but nothing on the bottom, so it only has just that edge there at the, the bottom, and so on and so forth for a lot of these, all these are all you know, kind of the same situation where it's like, I think this one here at the top might be if 
it has only a brick touching the top portion here and uh, not anything on the left, right, or bottom. And then it knows to put a line here and here and here. And it does that by math. So um, let's say that there's no blocks surrounding here. Um, so it'll, it'll look at this little situation here. It says, hey, look at the tile that's um, to uh, just above it. Look at the tile that's just above it. If there is a tile there that is a value of two, we're going to add one. If there's a tile to the right of it, then we're going to add two. If there's a tile to the um, below it, if there's a tile below it, then we're going to add four. And if there's a tile um, to the left of it, then we're going to add eight. So if none of these are true, it's going the tile index is always going to be zero. And zero would be this top tile here, which has the top left tile, um, which has you know walls on all sides of it. Now, if all of these are true, meaning it's completely surrounded by other tiles, it would say add one to the index, two to the index, four to the index, eight to the index, and that gives us the number 15. And then if we look over here, we can see 15 is the tile that is completely surrounded by blocks, so it knows to place that one. Um, the cool thing about this is um, kind of like if you've ever played, um, I don't know, Terraria. Um, if I were to create a function that allows me to add or remove blocks just by clicking, I could run this update and it would automatically update, you know, if I removed a block, it would automatically update the rest of the blocks all around it to the correct one. Um, I would have to, you know, I would have to filter through the entire array to do that, to know what's around it, or I could just probably pick the block that they clicked and then look around that specific block and I have to go through the whole array, but that's neither here nor there. But um, yeah, it goes through all the different blocks, um, checks to see where they're, what's going on around it, and then it sets the correct tile index over here from my, uh, my tile map. And then once the count is equal to the area of the array, it knows that it spawned all the tiles that it needs to. It sets that to true so we can stop spawning those tiles. And then below here is just um, a player controls, um, you know, do W, S, A, and D for the player controls. Um, yeah, so that's basically it here for the um, dungeon generator here. Um, like I said, the, really the only issue I've run into with this is, and I think I may have shown it at the beginning. I'm not sure if it actually showed, but let me try to see if I can recreate it here. So yeah, um, the only issue I've run into so far is it will go off the edge here. Um, I'm thinking what I need to do to stop that from happening um, so yeah, you can see here it goes off at the top, it goes off at the bottom here, and then it goes off at the, the, the bottom here as well. I'm thinking what I need to do is when setting up the corridor functions, after it picks a direction, it needs to check to see if the, cor if the length of the corridor is going to cause it to go off the map, and if it is, then just kind of circle back here to the beginning and reselect a, uh, a new direction, but I haven't just, I just haven't put that in yet. Yeah, that's as uh, far as I got so far with this, um, with the with the free version of Cord, uh, Construct 3. I think it's pretty cool. You know, this is kind of my first time messing with it. I've played with Construct 2 quite a bit. There was actually, um, this is the one that I did in Construct 2. This is actually more of a, um, a Terraria kind of thing where it's not like, it doesn't have to be connected corridors. It just has... Um, random cave generation and this one it does have that where you can like just remove here you can remove blocks and it automatically updates to the correct block that it's supposed to be there or you can add blocks as well and it knows what block should be there um, I think I st stopped working on this one when I ran into cellular automata with the trying to do figure out water um, and it was it was too difficult I couldn't figure I couldn't figure it out I'm not, I'm not that smart um, to figure out uh, cellular automata. But yeah, um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to post them, and I'll be more than happy to share um, you know, what I've kind of learned working with Construct 3 here. Uh, I'll put the caps in a Google Drive if anybody wants it. They can mess around with it. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day.